Hello, this is Dr. Mercola, and I'm sure most of us would agree that our eyesight is our most valuable sense, and that is the, the one sense that if we had to give up any that we would want to give up the least. So our vision is just so crucial to, to uh, understanding and getting feedback from the world because it's, I'd say, 90, over 90% 90 of our input is through our, through our eyes. So of course we want to preserve those. And, I, and um, it's especially important uh, to, to me because many of you may not be aware, but uh, for the two years prior to my starting medical school, I actually worked in the Illinois Eye Bank and I ex uh, extracted eyes for transplant, primarily the corneas. And uh, in the mid-70s, prior to my taking that position, uh, that uh, service was primarily performed by ophthalmology residents. So I had a, a really a chance to uh, work with eyes at a, at a very uh, significant level. And I just want to review the eye anatomy for you because some of you may not be aware of it. Uh, but if you remove the eyeball, it's a globe and it looks something like a ping pong ball. And uh, the, the surface of the eye uh, is the uh, cornea. And uh, it's actually transparent and uh, that's if you touch your eyes, what you're touching. And uh, it's like, kind of like the cover on a watch. And immediately behind that is the lens. But what lays on top of the lens is the iris or the colored part of your eye. And that lens is responsible for focusing the, the light onto the back of your eye, which is the retina. And in between the, the uh, retina and the lens is the aqueous humor, which is, uh, has no blood vessels in it, so that by passive diffusion, it nourishes, it helps to nourish the retina. Now, the retina is really part of your brain, and, and it really uh, focuses and, and um, transports this information back from your optic nerve right into your brain. And uh, because it's part of your brain, it is, it is loaded with polyunsaturated fats, primarily omega-3 fats, and the most important one, of course, being DHA. So if you want to preserve your eye health, it's very important to make sure that you have a high-quality source of animal-based omega-3s. And of course, my favorite is krill. Uh, but if your body doesn't have enough of those, it's going to impair your, your ability to have optimal eye health. Now, one of the um, most important contributors to eye problems would be oxidant stresses. And an oxidant is typically an oxygen molecule that has a, 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 an unpaired electron. And uh, our body, of course, produces antioxidants, but of course, uh, not it produces, it produces them, but we actually consume them through a diet. But one of the most imp important strategies is to remove yourself from exposures that will produce high oxidant stresses. And one of the most important ones, and I'm sure most people watching this understand and appreciate this, is smoking. So if you're smoking, that's clearly going to be a leading contributor to damaging your eyes. But there's other things, such as your blood sugar and your blood pressure, which can increase the oxidant stresses and lead to damaging your eyes. So you want to get those under control. And of course, there's exposure to chemicals which will also contribute to this. So um, it's important to make sure your body has an adequate supply of antioxidants. And there's a number of different ones that uh, you can uh, want to review to make sure that if you value your eyes that you're getting, that you and your family are getting enough of these. And, and primarily antioxidants are divided into two different groups. We have the water-soluble and the fat-soluble antioxidants. And ideally, you're going to need them both. They're both important to maintain optimal eye health. And the water-soluble antioxidants are used in real time, so your body doesn't build up large stores of them. And, and with respect to the eye, they're particularly useful for the lens because they help support the connective tissue there. And they also help maintain your intraocular pressure. So uh, they're, they're, it's really important that you, you make sure that you're getting those. And with respect to eye health, probably the most important ones tend to be the, uh, a, a class of substances called anthocyanidins. And uh, traditionally, if you've studied this at all, you'll know that bilberry has been noted to be extraordinarily useful uh, in this. And bilberry is actually a fruit in Europe, and in America it's called the huckleberry. It looks like a cross between a, a blueberry and a cranberry. And it became popular for eye health because in World War II, uh, British Royal Air Force pilots noticed that after eating them, especially at night, that they seem to improve their night vision. So this was the initial observation, then more studies were done, and it seemed to be very beneficial for this. So anthocyanidins are really useful, and bilberry is a traditional one. However, the, the interesting thing is that the newer research shows that another fruit, black currant, is actually a far more effective and higher source and concentration of these anthocyanidins. So uh, black currant really is the lead leader in um, and, and anthocyanidins and the water-soluble antioxidants for eye health. But the other uh, group of, an of antioxidants that are really important are the fat-soluble antioxidants, and examples of this would be vitamin A, vitamin E, and vitamin D. And the traditional ones in this area are uh, 
two that are both carotenoids, and these are lutein and zeaxanthin. And these are primarily located in the retina, especially in the macula. So if you don't have these, the strong oxidant effect of sunlight coming through your eyes can damage your eyes. And that's why it's so crucial to have these antioxidants in your, in your eye tissue, especially the retina. So um, since lutein and zeaxanthin are so important, it, it would be, make sense to make sure that you're having enough of the right foods to do that. And really, there's a king of these foods that, uh, that, that really has the most lutein of any, any food that we know of, and that is a vegetable, uh, kale. And kale has, uh, you need about somewhere between 6 and 20 milligrams of, of uh, lutein a day. And kale has about 25 milligrams, whether it's cooked or uncooked. But the, some of the newer science shows that if you slightly cook it, you'll actually liberate more of the fat-soluble antioxidants. Uh, so that is one, one component you can use. But it's, you can also juice them and, and get those too. And typically, lutein is associated with zeaxanthin in, in uh, the food. So other, the other sources primarily would be uh, the dark green leafy vegetables like spinach and collard greens. Uh, and they're, they're relatively high, but in a cooked version, if you ever cook spinach, you know that you have a large amount, and when you cook it, it compresses quite dramatically. So a cooked cup of spinach will have about 20 milligrams, but an uncooked cup of spinach will only have about 2 or 3 milligrams, so not uh, nearly anywhere as, as much as you would need. So another source of them, uh, and uh, previously I thought that was a relatively high source, would be eggs, especially in the egg yolk. Um, and that's, uh, but egg yolks only have about a half a milligram of uh, total carotenoids, and of that total carotenoids, about half of that is uh, lutein. So even if you're eating eight eggs a day, as I do sometimes, you're still only getting about four or five milligrams of lutein in, in, in the egg yolk. So clearly you're going to eat, need the, the, the dark green leafy vegetables. Now, uh, another source, and, and really this is an emerging one, it's not, t it's not typically a food source, is, and, and I believe, is the most significant and most profound antioxidant for eye health that's ever been, been found is something called astaxanthin. And you might be familiar with astaxanthin because it's, it's in our krill, because krill tend to eat uh, marine phytoplankton or marine algae. And as a result of that, they concentrate this very beneficial uh, carotenoid and uh, astaxanthin. And other animals that would have it would be salmon, which is, which is responsible for giving it its, its pinkish color or pinkish orange color. So those are the two foods that have it, but typically as a dietary source, it's really not in the food supply so much aside from krill and salmon. Uh, so it's typically taken as a supplement because to be effective, you need about two milligrams. And in, in our daily dose of krill, however, there's about a half a milligram. So it's a significant source. Uh, but interestingly, astaxanthin has been shown to be about 500 times more potent than vitamin E, and it's significantly more potent than lutein. The specific studies haven't been done, but, but the, the strong implications is far more important and important than lutein. So these are strategies that you can use if you can get these antioxidants into your food, food ideally, and then if you have specific concerns and you want to maintain that, is to make sure that you're getting a, a high quality source of these antioxidants. And you know, we do offer one uh, now it's for, for our eye formula, which has all of the antioxidants that I mentioned, uh, and, and in the appropriate concentrations that the studies have shown them to be powerfully effective at uh, supporting eye health. So if this is a concern for you, I'd strongly recommend it, uh, especially if you're, if you're considering a supplement, of course, um, then you'll want to make sure that looking at the quality of the supplement, the astaxanthin that we uh, use is actually uh, done or uh, produced from a, a high, uh, supercritical uh, carbon dioxide extraction, which gets a very high percentage of the astaxanthin to make sure that it's quality and there's no toxic solvents involved. So that's something that we can do that you can consider. And like all our supplements that we have, um, if it doesn't work for you, uh, for whatever reason, there's a no questions asked lifetime money back guarantee. So that's a, you know, sort of a reassurance that you don't have to worry if, it's, you know, if, it's some, if there's a reaction or anything that you can safely uh, take that and, and, and have a, a, a refund if, if this is not something that's working out for you. So I hopefully this information, especially applying uh, the, the basics of getting those dark green leafy vegetables, will uh, help serve you and your family retain one of the most important senses that we have, which is our eyesight.